Woo, that was scary. So it seems to be working now. <laughs> if you, if somebody in the chat can, can hear me, please let me know you can. Lord, not quite sure what happened there, but that was terribly scary. Okay. Hello. Ooh, it's already making noises. Welcome to Art Club. <laughs> I kind of know what I'm doing now because I did a stream yesterday. So we're 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 working on it. Hopefully, hopefully this will this will continue working. Okay. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to learn about Matisse and I'm gonna turn off my phone. This is entirely professional. I I do wanna note yet again, I know I keep saying it. Um, this is not a library presentation. This is a Lindsay presentation. I, this is not affiliated with the library. Just to be clear, <laughs> we have social media rules and I don't want to break them. That's why I'm saying that and being crystal clear about it. So, excellent. Hey, Catherine, I haven't seen you in a long time. I think the, was it the Revel last year? It's been quite a while. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Okay, so here's what we're doing today for you and for whoever watches this video later. We are going to learn about Henri Matisse and we are going to learn how to draw a simplified version of his goldfish painting, which I'll show you soon. And then um, we are going to uh, paint it. It'll be fun. And I just realized I don't have uh, the example colored, but that's okay. So, um, yeah, this is the first one. Please be patient with me. <laughs> I kind of only know what I'm doing. This is the only first one though, so we're gonna get it straight. So the things that I have today are, this is this is watercolor paper taped onto hardboard slash masonite. That's not usually how I do it, but the bigger clipboard that I usually use to tape stuff on was causing a glare, so I just dug this out. This is stuff I usually gesso and paint. So I have this. Oh wait, let's see. We're going to go to do, do this. There we go. So now you can see what I'm doing. Um, I have a pencil. Now when you draw, what you're going to want to do will be oriented that way. You're going to want to use a regular pencil and make light lines. Um, if you're, if depending on what you're doing, let's just say, I'm going to use watercolor. If you're going to use watercolor, you want to do that, but I'm going to draw really, really thick, heavy lines so you can see it. Um, those are the only things that you really need are a pencil and whatever kind of paper. Since I'm doing watercolor, I'm using watercolor paper. That's one tip is like people and kit, kit, when kids get those little sets of nine, which I do not own, um, they're fine. They're really great. It's just then you use it on regular paper and you're like, boo. But it's, they're actually really decent. Um, I would be using that as my example if I had one, which, which I don't. So um, I have a little watercolor set, which I'll go over later. It's these colors. I had to swatch it out because this is like a really old set that I've had forever and I made very questionable decisions um, when I put this palette together, but we'll go over that when we get to it. And then I have brushes and water and all of that. Um, if you want to uh, draw along, fantastic. If you extra don't want to, if you scroll down in the description a little bit, you'll see the, um, you'll, you'll see a link to a traceable. That's a PDF. It's eight and a half by 11. It'll print on the regular paper. If you do fit to page, it will print the whole so It will print the whole page, but if you don't, you can cut it down to eight to eight by 10. Um, there's also a copy of the presentation in PDF form that I'm about to do. I promise it's short. Um, cause we got to learn about Matisse some. So really this is, while I'm not representing the library, this is a lot like the art clubs that you will see in the library branches once they open up again. So it'll be a minute. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First things first, let me see, let me get to the presentation portion, which is here, present, there we go, 
and switch to this. Woo, it's working. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, this is very similar, eerily similar even to the one that, I think I got to do this program twice. I think it was twice. So anyway, um, but uh, you see though on the on the slide it says unofficial quarantine art club crystal clear so here is you see on the right that is the goldfish painting we are going to do a much simplified version of it and i don't have i'll i might have to dig out a color photo i took of that one because all of that that like the one i actually painted and a version of this one that you see on the screen um, that I did in gouache there in my office at work. And, you know, I'm not even asking if I can go up there. So um, next, since that's working, let's see. So we're going to talk about Henri Matisse. It's going to be it's going to be short. But um, if you don't know anything about him, these are just some basic quick, quick, quick facts. Um, he was born in France in 1869. That makes him the, con uh, he was alive around the time uh, Monet and Van Gogh um, and all of those people were doing their, their revolutionary art and Matisse was doing his own. So his father was a, a wealthy grain merchant and that would just meant that the family had access to money. A lot of them didn't like Van Gogh's family. They had a little bit of money, but they weren't like super rich. Some of them were like Picasso's family. Anyway, so uh, he uh, did what his dad wanted. He went to law school, but he hated law school. And uh, he's like, I, I don't want to do this. And so he was kind of sickly. He got sick. He had got a appendicitis and he was stuck in his bed for a good long while. And his mom got him a watercolor set and was like, hey, since you're so bored, why don't you paint? And so he, he painted with his watercolor set and he was like, this is the best thing ever. And so he decided he wanted to be a painter. And so he quit law school and went to art school. Well, like many of the revolutionary uh, painters of his day and later, he decided that he didn't especially want to do like the, 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 the straight art school that was common at the time which was me which means that you did uh, live figures figure drawing like models um or you copied the masters and he didn't really want to do that he wanted to do his own thing we went out and he met the impressionists he met Seurat. he met a lot of them uh he met Cezanne now uh we've done here's here's where it gets a little bit complicated because you kind of if you with no context um, if you, if you don't know anything about art history for art club, if you come to, if you come to one, once the library is open, uh, we do, uh, an artist a month and we've done, um, Monet, Van Gogh, Picasso, a lot of really, really big ones. And so a lot of the people who come to my programs have kind of a, an idea of what, where art movements fit in place because essentially this is an art history lesson with fun time attached. So, um, anyway, I should probably check. Okay. We're good. I think. Yep. Okay. So anyway, um, he was a major contributor to fauvism. I'm going to explain what fauvism is in a minute. It's an offshoot of Impressionism. I'll explain that very, very briefly in a little bit. It's art like you see in that painting, that self-portrait he did. And I have a feeling my face is blocking his face. He just looks like a nice older man. Anyway, um, so he met Picasso in 1906 in Gertrude Stein's salon. If you remember your English classes, even from high school, you will probably remember the name Gertrude Stein. She wrote poetry. I just can't bring myself to, to enjoy. Um, but she was, she was an American expatriate and she, um, figured out who all the revolutionary artists and writers, etc., were in Paris, invited them all to this, this, um, her amazing house. And they met however often, um, and you know, that, that had the, the whole social circle going and she displayed their art and it was a big, 
uh, a big achievement if you got your art displayed in in her house and uh, Matisse did but so so did Picasso I think I think the Matisse got taken down it, it had been hanging there for quite a while but it got taken down for a Picasso anyway um, so he taught art at the Academy Matisse from 1908 to 1911 that's an art school that Gertrude Stein started for him so she was clearly a super believer in Matisse. He was he, he was doing a lot of revolutionary stuff. So uh, then he moved to Nice to get, you know, a little bit into the country. And uh, he kept working and he decided he was going to stay in France during the Nazi invasion. Now, he was not Jewish. So I guess he felt some degree of safety. But one of his daughters was... Um, a member of the uh, resistance and she got tortured and uh, one of the guys who worked for him died in a concentration camp so he didn't get he, he didn't not feel the effects of the holocaust i don't see how anybody could not have so next up um after after all that in the i guess in the middle in the middle of all that he got diagnosed with cancer and he he was stuck in bed again like he had been and uh, he made art with paper cutouts. And I'll show you an example of that. Is Maybe it's the next slide. Ooh, let's see. Nope, let's see. One more. Yeah, this is, this is an example of his uh, artwork. It was just like paper cutouts of various shapes. Most of them kind of look like sea life, which is what this one makes me think of. But not all of them. There's all kind of all kind of interesting stuff that he did. So uh, this is an interesting quote of his: "Said an artist must never be a prisoner of himself, prisoner of a style, or prisoner of a reputation, prisoner of success." Which calls to mind a few other artists. The last artist that we did at Art Club um, before all of this craziness happened and the libraries closed was, uh, Andy Warhol, who I'm not too, too fond of, but he was definitely a prisoner of his success. He just, he got to the point that he just wanted to make money. Anyway, that's another story. If y'all want to do, do some Andy Warhol, let me know and we can talk about him. So we're almost done. Um, yeah, he recovered from the cancer. I think it was like the, the upper bowels. And uh, in 1952, he opened his own museum near Nice in La Couteau, France. And uh, he died in 1954 of a heart, a heart attack. He even outlived uh, Picasso's 81 years and he lived to be 84. That's pretty impressive. So he had a full life. He had a full life of painting and of doing doing what he wanted to do, which is great. A lot of A lot of artists had a very limited time like Van Gogh. Anyway, so Fauvism, and I'm going to talk about Van Gogh in a second. If you think about Monet and Monet's water lilies, that that's that's the impressionism I'm about to talk about. So all of these people, Monet, Van Gogh, Matisse, were living at the same general time period. And what's really one of the really important things that happened then was the it was use of cameras became pretty widespread and so there were people before before then if you look at art older than say Monet's stuff in a lot of cases there was a lot of stuff going on at the same time uh, but it's tends to be more realistic photorealistic even sometimes uh, look up Isaac Levitin if you want to see his stuff he's Russian oh gosh his stuff just blows my mind anyway so uh, Levitin I uh, mean so uh so Matisse is of the school. He's like, well, we don't really need to paint photorealistic stuff anymore. We can kind of paint what we want. So what the Impressionists did was they decided that they wanted to catch light accurately. They were trying to get an impression of what was going on without being entirely realistic, but an impression of what's going on. And they wanted to do it quickly so they could get the light. Like if you think about Monet and he has like 20,000 paintings of haystacks with different lighting on them, the same thing, I guess, goes for the water lilies. I think there were 800 of those crazy amount. Anyway, so, uh, 
there's that was impressionism and that was kind of the first one it was still pretty realistic the light was realistic the colors were, were pretty realistic right then comes fauvism and expressionism <laughs> is the best way i can term it um in art club we also did edvard mooch who did the screaming guy on the road ah that guy yeah, um, he was one of the first to inject emotion into his paintings. Um, let me just check. Looks good. So before before that, like the the impressionism, the impressionists were pretty much like straight straightforward. I'm gonna paint the scene generally as it is. The expressionists did what did some wild stuff. They used bright colors. They used lots and lots of paint. They, it was, it was interesting. So that was the first time that they were really departing. So Fauvism is about the same time as Expressionism. But you can think of Expressionism, Munch, German, kind of. That, okay. <laughs> There's, there's a great article I can put in the description if anybody's interested because it, the difference between the two. So what Fauvism is doing is it's kind of injecting emotion by using really, really bright colors, but it's scientifically interested in colors. A lot of the colors that you see over here are colors that are going to be straight out of the tube. Like they get a tube of oil paint and that red in the middle of there, they're just going to slather it on and that is going to be their red. Otherwise, they in other other situations they usually dampened them somehow mixed them somehow but they used really really bright colors a lot of paint and the main difference really to make a fauvist painting couple differences it's kind of stand out specifically from an expressionist painting even though expressionism kind of an umbrella um fauvism tends to be a simple simple subject like you see a a, a window or you see the uh this this lady over here or that in the bottom is uh matisse's mother she covered the uh, walls in uh red and red rugs so because she wanted some some color very matisse is an interesting guy he's not like he doesn't have a wild story or anything but he's a really interesting guy Anyway, at the top, you might see something that looks to you kind of like Van Gogh. And Van Gogh fits in the post-impressionism hole. So he wasn't, he was painting brighter colors than, you know, and differently than Monet, but he wasn't, hadn't taken the step really to expressionism, even though he said that, you know, he was really expressing his love and all that and um, but he was, he, Van Gogh kind of fits in the middle. So Van Gogh is sandwiched between Monet and Matisse. Uh, and there's that, that, that village right there is a really, really good example. I think of, you know, you could look at that and you know, it's not Van Gogh, but you're like, oh, I see the similar paint strokes and stuff like that. So anyway, that's Fauvism. <laughs> and that is pretty much what Matisse and a couple other artists started. And that was his big thing he's he was also did a lot of expressionism a lot of impressionism he lived 84 years he did a lot of stuff but uh this this is really what he was known for and or is known for also note the the other real difference is note that the the contrast between the uh, between bright colors complementary colors if you look at a color wheel colors that are on the opposite sides like red and green, they make each other pop. And you'll see a lot of that, especially say in that portrait um, and in that, um, that, that dining room scene. So anyway, that's, that's your short introduction to Fauvism. It's really fascinating, especially when you get into what distinguishes Fauvism from the rest of Expressionism. It's really complicated though. So anyway, um, yeah, we talked about that. These are just some examples of stuff that Mat that Matisse has painted. Uh, on the left, you see you see the red and the green together again. This is this is super fauvism, simple subject, really really clear colors and a lot of um, contrast made by say reds and greens together or other complementary colors or blue and orange and another one is yellow and purple 
But you see that you see that green line down the middle and on one side it's cool colors and one side it's orange colors that just make that makes the contrast work out better. You see the same kind of thing, but all of this is fauvisme on the left that's pretty what impressiony eh, expressiony not really fauvist but yeah so these are just examples if you want to download this and look at these i love that i love that cat painting but you see he did a lot of goldfish goldfish were actually rare and expensive at that point they came from china and um, they had just gotten a bunch of them note too what i think is really neat is the um the, the two bowls where the fish are. Um, note that kind of looks like at least the same bowl, though a different table. Also, that kind of looks like the same table that we'll be painting today. So, and that's it. That's, that's now you know a little bit about um, Matisse. And so I'm gonna go back to this scene and that's as far as we're going with Matisse. Um, I do need to, let's see, I'm going to go back to the scene and then I'm going to go and get a picture to show you because I forgot to get a picture. You see how tremendously professional this is right now because this is my first one and I'm only kind of prepared and now I have to go back through all my pictures. So, there, wait, no, that's the one I painted. If you want to give this one a try with actual, um, with, with like, you know, pa painting the actual painting, then uh, by all means go to, is that it? It took me, I think I spent about three hours painting it. Now we'll have to see if I can. Shoot. I'm going to find it. Like, this is something that you need to see. Did that after. Sorry, guys. Give me one minute. Okay, it was definitely after that. Okay, here it is. Don't want to show you a picture of a, a patron painted copy because she might not appreciate that. Okay. Wait, wrong one. Shoot. This is ridiculous. And they did that one. One second, guys. Before that. There it is. Okay, good. Finally. Nope. Nope. Okay, I am going to show you an excellent picture made by a patron as soon as I crop out the patron. Again, not re representing the library, but this is the best I can do right now. Done. Okay. I don't know where my copy of this is, but here we go. It's going to look something like that when we're done. <laughs> I can pull up the traceable and you can see that, but otherwise that's what we got. So I'm going to put back to this. Scene and I'm going to go and find I don't know where that is. 
the traceable so I can draw from it and then we'll get going. Okay, I'll probably edit that part out, but we just, we need to work on that. So here's what you do. Make sure you can see everything okay. I'll show you what we're drawing really fast. Um, that's what we're drawing. Again, you can download the traceable um, in the description. It'll just be a PDF of that. So I'm going to draw it from scratch because you probably don't just, you know, have one of those sitting around. So here's what we're going to do. Let me go here. And first, I'm going to start by drawing that cylinder. I'm going to draw the fishbowl. And I'm going to go in a lot, about, what, a third of the page. And draw a straight line down. Again, I'm using a pencil that I would normally not be using. So if you want to be able to erase stuff, this is not a good a good pencil to erase with. But it will do for our purposes. I just want you to be able to see what I'm drawing. So another line parallel to that and then kind of a smiley line under that. All right, let me just make sure everything is showing up. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, on top we are going to do another one, another smiley line like that. And then we're going to finish that with the, it's an oval with uh, another about like that, like a rainbow. Let's, let's do a rainbow line. Think of this not as trying to draw an oval, but as trying to draw discrete lines. So we're going to do that. And there is the bas basic part of our bowl. Now, Matisse used a really, really weird perspective. So the, it looks like the, uh, the, the bowl would be falling off the uh, counter and, you know, off the table, but whatevs. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this, and this is going to go up here. This is the top of the water from the back. And this is the bottom. We're doing the same thing. Think of this as a rainbow and a smile. Don't worry about completing a uh, a, a good uh, triangle. I mean, a, a good uh, oval or a circle or anything like that, because that's not what Matisse was doing. This is this isn't one of a lot of what Matisse did. It looks like you could just do. It's just he's the first one who did it, and that's what's amazing. That's what, that goes for a lot of people. Anyway, so now we need to do the bottom of the water. It comes about right here and is another rainbow, okay? And there's our bowl. So next we're gonna do the fish, which will just be an arch, like, yeah, we'll go over like that, and then up a little bit for a fin and down. That was pretty much arch and a little down. And then we're gonna go out from here and get the tail okay and then from there we're just gonna connect them just like that give them a little belly and there we go there's a fish give them an eye back here and give them a mouth yay fish so my fish is kind of weird but you know we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna go use an eraser because I really don't like that that was like a slightly deformed fish. I am using this, if you watercolor, these are great erasers. This is, um, they don't leave, Oh, actually I'm not because I need a harder eraser. It's really easy to damage watercolor paper, um, and the other kind doesn't really. This kind will, the kneaded erasers will not. This is kneaded eraser. This is a Stadler, Mars, something. Anyway, and another advantage of drawing things lightly is that you can um, erase them easier. So that's a little bit better for my fish. So we have to draw the reflection of the fish on the top. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna do, let me straighten them up. I'm gonna do just 
this kind of shape. Now this is just the top of the fish. If you compare it to um, the the original, it uh, there are I think four fish in the bowl. We're just doing one. So there you go. Now we have the fish in the fish bowl. Yay! Okay, so now we're gonna try the table. The table is weird shaped. It starts right here. Uh, yeah, it starts about right here. And then down here, it comes to about here. Okay, so again, weird perspective. And we want it to, let's see. Yeah, right, and then doesn't come out quite as much over there. Good. Enough. So we've got our fish bowl. Now we're going to draw a little potted flower. Violet maybe? In the original it's purple. So I'm going to draw a little flower. First I'm going to make the cup for it. Let's see. Ah, nope, that's, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Okay, there we go. And, okay, so we're going to make the cup for it. We're going to do just like we did the cylinder. We're going to do a line here, right, and a line here, parallel lines, trying to make them the same length. And then we're going to draw a little smile there. And then we're gonna draw another smile there. Okay, and we'll fill in the rest of it in a minute because the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a leaf and we're gonna do that for the leaf. Okay, put a little line in the middle. And then we're gonna make a little flower. So I'm gonna make a little shoot up. I'm surprised we haven't been invaded by cats. Little shoot up like this. Ah. And then we're gonna just draw a simple, simple four petaled flower. There's one, two, three, four. Yay, flower. Now what we're gonna do is connect, connect that. I guess since I just used lines, we didn't need to do that. So there you go. There's the flower. So next, a lot of this painting, if you look at the original, is black at the bottom so we're gonna go and we're gonna make that black part and it goes and it kind of curves up to this and then goes along with this and then goes around like that um, so we're gonna do down like this like that and then we're gonna make this one go up a little bit and then down like that and then the background of all of this is going to be black and the background of all of this is gonna be that pink wallpaper with spots so next, let's see, let's do, we'll do the leaves up here at the top. So I'm gonna do one leaf, just like I did that one down here, but bigger. And this comes up to about here. So I'm gonna do one, and then we just connect it down here. One, give it a little line in the middle. Two, the same thing. If they're not straight, that's great, actually. Two, and then the third one will be over here. If they overlap, that's fine. Make them come back and then, there we go. So there are three leaves. Um, up here, I'm just gonna draw a bunch of circles because in the painting, it's this really neat looking wallpaper that uh, has like, looks like it's like green plant flower looking things, but they have stems. Um, and we're not gonna try that, especially not with watercolor. I'm getting graphite all over everything. <sighs> That's okay. So, 
This will not be my best work, but it never is when I do stuff with programs. I also generally take way too long to do anything, so I don't generally paint or do whatever at programs. What I'm looking at it is just the, the traceable, essentially, so I'm drawing pretty much almost exactly what's on the traceable. This guy needs to be up here, though. Let's go over here, 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 and I think that's going to be it. Okay, so there are circles. Just draw circles. They don't need to be perfect. If you draw them lightly, um, they will, uh, you'll, you'll be getting the paint in them and you won't even notice them anyway. So they don't need to be perfect by any means. Okay. So next what we're going to draw is the base, the, the weirdly non-supportive base of the, uh, of the table. And it's like not even centered. It's way down here on the left. So I'm going to draw a line here and a line here. Yes, it is too narrow. It, it is what it is. So I'm going to draw a line here and then the legs end like that. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to draw this. Draw lines up here for the weirdly still non-supportive legs. And there's this little oval in it. So I'm going to draw a little oval right there. And here's the rest of it. Oval. And then I'm going to draw lines to connect them. And then think of, again, I know, so I say, don't worry about an oval. Draw rainbows and smiles. Draw rainbows and smiles. So I'm going to draw a rainbow here to make this part hollow just like that yay we have our complete table in so next um we only have a couple more things to do first we're going to do the arm of a uh, chair now just go for it <laughs> like i'm about to do choose an angle be like oh this comes down here and then it goes like that great so i'm going to draw the rest of the arm like no no not like that there we go good enough Okay, so there's the arm of my chair. Now I'm gonna draw like some, some slap things down. Some supports. And smear graphite. This is very soft graphite. That's why it's doing that. Um, down my page, but that's okay. Let's draw these lines as straight as you can. If they're not straight, it doesn't really matter. Ooh, that's not good. Nothing. I generally never use this kind of... Uh-oh, kitten invasion. I've been wondering when Ollie would come to visit. And good enough this is Ollie he is a few months old he is a very very good kitty who is a terrible art assistant and he might be going to play in the bedroom in a little bit if he decides he really really wants to paint with us huh yeah so I'm going to come back here for a minute and he stepped on the keyboard at least he didn't stop the stream okay we are almost done next up we're gonna draw two leaves right here think of this first one as a heart there's one side right and then the side there we go and then boom there's a line okay this one starts with a little oval here and then comes down and then comes like that so we show it's a leaf and then we give it its own line and now there are random lily pads in the bottom of it in the bottom of the painting I I don't know I, Matisse made some interesting decisions so I'm going to draw some random lily pads in the bottom. So there's a V and then kind of a circle around it. Okay. 
and then another V and then they can overlap and then kind of a circle around it. And when you put in a flower, we're gonna put in little pink flowers. Just do squiggles in a general round pattern. Squiggle, 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 squiggle. If it goes off the page, that's great. So I'm gonna do one down here, V, and then circle around. And then one up here, Let's start it upside down about here circle around and then squiggle flower like that and then that connects and that is our whole drawing and I probably should have said earlier if you're using a pencil and it's not a normal like a regular pencil which I hope is what you're using you need to make sure that it's not water soluble if you're going to use markers or some kind of wet anything because you'll have a bad time if you do it'll just ruin it so uh, I checked with this one. I checked a couple others and found they were water soluble. This one isn't perfectly not water soluble, but it's good enough for government work. So next we're just going to paint this. And then that will be that. Nasturiums. Catherine, you know way more about flowers than I do. I say like lily pads. Nasturiums. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so I hope that you've drawn along with me because it's it's fun and I think that it hopefully it's uh, I simplified it enough that you don't feel intimidated by it. So I'm going to get out my neato little little paints. This is called a portable painter. Um, it's a palette that you can buy. It's about 30 bucks. I bought it years ago right when I started watercolor and I filled it immediately which I almost immediately then regretted because I learned I figured out what I was doing kind of shortly after I got this and filled the palette with colors that I would not put in there now but that's okay so this thing is really really cool you open it up um, it says portable painter because it is portable and these this is a great little a great little palette if you want to go somewhere and you want to use your own paints so it comes out of here these slide onto here on each side and they'll sit across your knee both of them and uh and hold water like one clean and one dirty it's really cool um i don't think i ever used it because i filled it up and i was like gosh i put the wrong the wrong colors in but that's okay so here we go we're gonna use them today this is the smallest little set i have hey dog hair so here are the colors that I have. Um, if you're working with whatever medium you want, like crayons or whatever, that's great. That's fine. Um, if you're working with watercolors and you have one of those set, uh, sets of eight or whatever, that's fine. I'm going to be doing pretty much what you, the, the same kind of colors that you get out of that. What I, I'm not sure what brand this is. I think these are probably a mix of brands from when I first started painting, but I am not really sure. I do know that um, the main differences, the main difference that that would happen today is this is black. You see, um, I would not put a black in a palette anymore, but that's okay. And then this brown, that's a burnt umber, and I would probably put a burnt sienna in it. But anyway, that's off the subject. So I have a cool yellow, a warm yellow, a warm red, a cool red, uh, a, a magenta. Probably maybe a rose matter. So I have a pink. We'll call it a pink. Um, this is a warm blue. This is a cool blue. This is phthalo blue, and I'll use some of that. Um, this is probably hooker's green. This is a, um, a a cool green. Maybe it's phthalo. It's it's probably phthalo green. That's phthalo green. And this looks like some kind of sap green. This is yellow ochre um, and uh, burnt umber and black. I'm not going to use all of these colors, uh, but I will use some of them. So, now if you're using watercolor and you haven't used much watercolor before, what the main thing is that you need to be careful where you put paint. So, if you want something to be white, you need to 
pain, you need to leave it white or else you need to get yourself some like masking fluid or a paint marker. Like I have Posca's here. I love Posca's. They're fantastic. Um, but if uh, you are going to use uh but but you know you just be careful and leave the white and paint your light colors first and then paint is that the way it, i have i haven't watercolored in a long time um but the thing is is that you need to reserve your white your your light spaces and do those so you're painting the darker around it because you can't once something gets dark in watercolor it's dark and that's the main thing. There aren't a lot of do-overs in watercolor. And that's why a lot of people find watercolor intimidating once you get into it a little bit. So we're not going to do that. So I have water. I guess I should have listed that. This is, um, I just, I, I keep two jars of water on my desk. I don't want to waste paper cups or something like that. I also have this rag that I use for um, watercolor and gouache. And I do a lot more gouache these days. Um, gouache is like uh, opaque watercolor kind of. Um, but I use stuff that's water soluble that you know this will not wash out clean but it'll wash out well enough that I'm not picking up paint. So for oils and acrylics um, I use uh, I use paper towels, but, and really for this, ah, uh, acrylics would be better suited, but my, most of my acrylics are at work from a different project that I was doing. Um, and I'm not going up there. So we are going to work with watercolor today. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the light colors first and then go back and paint the dark colors more carefully. Um, I'm going to take this big brush. I'm going to try and do this just with one big brush, one little brush, and one medium brush, maybe. That looks about right. Um, the most important thing with watercolor I've learned over the now years that I've done, that I've painted, um, the paper is really the most important part. If you're trying to sell watercolor, you just have to get all of the professional stuff. That is, that's just the way it is. Uh, but if you're painting for yourself, the, the main thing is to get actual watercolor paper, hopefully 140 pounds slash 300 GSM paper. If you want it, if you want the best result, use 100% cotton paper, and that's a little bit expensive. Um, but once you're doing it for best result, you, you know, you, you've probably already sunk money into it because art can be terribly expensive. So I'm just going to start at the top so that can be drying um, because we also have to wait for parts to dry before we move on to other parts if the paints are going to touch. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to get, I'm going to make a pink. Okay. If you're using one of those little eight ones, that's great because that'll make your life easier. I'm going to go in here. Woo. This is this is what happens when you use an unused plastic palette. And I think my actually hey look, I have one of those fancy Amazon ones. I can use that. Palmer got me this for Christmas and it's super cute. And it's just flower pattern I guess it's by I think it's Arteza and now if you want to get watercolors that are decent but not expensive that's a great brand Cotman is great too but I think Arteza is even cheaper um, these are mostly Cotman and that's it's a good student grade brand so I'm gonna do I don't really use this glass one this is this is ceramic I want a kind of big one but you see how differently it's behaving but I want a lot of water in this more than that. And then you might want to use a, here's where I tested my pencils. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now watercolor, keep in mind, also um, dries lighter than um, it is wet. So there are a lot of weird different rules with different kinds of paint about that. 
So I'm just going to go in and now remember we're going to be painting these these leaves green so don't freak out and these uh, dots are going to be green too and that's going to be darker than this pink. So I'm going to go in and then below that's going to be black so that's another thing we don't need to worry about as long as it's all dry. Now normally I would go in and maybe wet this first so things would turn out more smoothly but I'm not doing that right now. Maybe do down here. I'm gonna be kind of careful at the top. Here. I'm not even gonna try. There's white at the top it, ideally, but I'm not gonna not gonna do it. not an exercise in perfectionism also please remember that you're doing this for yourself like and don't try no two paintings are the same ever you're not yours is not going to look like this if i do this 12 times none of them are going to look the same so don't stress out about the way it looks that's not the point the point is doing it and especially in such crazy times like i am probably not going to be leaving my house for weeks which is one reason I'm streaming. I'm in that high risk group and I really don't want the coronavirus. So Palmer is doing all of the out of the house things for me. Um, and so I'm kind of, kind of a shut in for the foreseeable future. Isn't that cute? Okay. And so, you know, we got to occupy ourselves sometimes and it's better to do something that's, you know, at least kind of productive and sit in front of a video game all day or stare at Netflix or something like that. Also, you know, I interacting with people, even if it's just through chat, um, is, is better for you in the long term. Ooh, I missed the little spot. There we go. Okay. So we've got that. Next up, we're going to go with... I'm going to do the orange of the fish, clean off my brush with, ah, nothing. Yeah, I'll use this one. I'm going to do the orange of the fish. Now I don't have an orange. So what this, this red is, it's called cadmium red light. Whenever you see it, people think a lot that it is, um, it's an orange when they come to my programs and I explain again, this has nothing to do with the library, but, um, and I explain that it's not, it's a red. It's just a very, very, um, orangey red. This is, and these are both hues. These aren't the actual thing. Cause these are less expensive paints. Um, ah, mix it up. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. So I have an orange here that will do. I'm going to put a little more red in it. There we go. So I just have a, I have an orange. I'm just gonna paint the fish. No, before I ruin my, oh, that's gonna be black anyway. So we're okay. So I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna paint the reflection first. And I mean, the in mine, the lines are just kind of a fact of life. One, one fun fact or not so fun fact about watercolor is that once you watercolor over a pencil mark, what no matter what kind of pencil it is, you can't erase it anymore. So any any line you've hit, you can't you won't be able to erase. Go ahead, try. Actually, don't don't try. You'll you'll ruin your paint. But it won't work. This is an oddly shaped fish, but that's okay. We get the point. Okay, I think I've just decided for the for people who don't want to sit through that <laughs> presentation. Actually, I might I might edit that out that part out where I was just sitting there confused, like oh no, I forgot to do such and such. Okay, so we got our fish, and I think that's all we have of orange. Um, I'm gonna do a little purple for the flower. Cause that's a light color and you can use a purple, you can use a pink, whatever. I'm going to get this 
pink and the reason that I would put a pink on there even early is because that's how you, it's easier to get a good purple see that with a pink than it is to get with a red so I'm gonna paint my, my little flower purple nice light little purple that's cute lavender ish little violet thing there we go okay now on the original painting if you go back and look the um the the bottom of the bowl has some rocks or something that are yellow so i'm going to go and paint those in now so when we go back later um we're not like oh darn so i'm gonna go get some yellow in there put a good bit of water in it here comes master smolliver Oh, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. I know. You're such a good art assistant. I'm just going to do dashes down here like that. Some of these will get painted over. Others won't. I'm going to try not to paint over all of them. I don't know how successful I'll be. But yeah, I'm just going to put some little lines down there. Good enough. And we'll go back in and see what those turn out later because it'll be an adventure. Yeah, I know you're a good boy. I'm down here. Okay. Let's see what else is small. Um, let's go ahead. I don't want to do the table yet. Oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do this in that yellow too. Let's we'll get some more of the yellow and do the bottom of this. The, the part where the soil is inside is going to be black. So don't worry about that yet. We'll get to that. Okay, here he comes again. Master Smolliver. Come see. Come see. Let me finish. Nope. Okay. We're going. I'm going to put Ollie in the bedroom really fast. Ollie, say bye bye. That's where all his toys are, um, because uh, if um, if the doggos get his toys, then they they disappear. So his toys have to be somewhere where the doggos can't uh, can't get to. And here's Lucy. Okay, so what else? That's it for that, right? All right. Uh, blue. Let me look at the original really fast. What color I wanted. This is way back. Okay, so the top of the fishbowl is also going to be yellow. Like that's this area around this fish up here. So I'm going to get my medium brush and do that because I don't want to spend forever doing that. And this, I put a lot of water in that, so um, I might be picking some of that up if I'm not careful, but those lines are so heavy. Okay, so I'm just going to paint this yellow. And I'm going to go around here and I'm going to go over that lip. And that lip, we're, uh, I, you can... You can preserve white if you want. I'm not trying it. Oh no! See, this is... Be careful. You'll see that in the original painting, Matisse does that too. Um, he skirts around stuff, but he was using oil and he must have painted it um, all at once, which is a la prima. So, yeah, I don't like that. I'm picking some up. I'm drying my brush a little bit and picking up some of that orange. Um, so he painted it all at one time and he didn't wait for all of it to dry. And so, okay, I don't like that either. Out. Better. Yeah. But yeah, if he painted around it so he wouldn't end up with a bunch of muddy oil paint. There we go. Good enough. From now on, we're going to be more careful. <laughs> 
about um, what we do with that. So next, I think I'm gonna, is that dry? Yeah. Next, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do green. So I'm just gonna use this green just because it looks more like a green you're likely to have. I get green and a lot of water. And I'm gonna look at it on here, see if that's the color I want, that's fine. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna use this. This thalo green is a very bluey green, which is which is fine. Hopefully you have one that's more neutral. I'm gonna go up here, that feels dry to me. And I'm gonna do that. The, in the original, um, Matisse uses two greens. One of them is a bluey green. And that's pretty much for these. And the other one is more of like a sap green, which is a yellowy green. But on most beginner sets, you only get one. And that is usually eh, kind of kind of a neutrally green. It's interesting this this graphite is almost repelling the paint for a minute until I paint over it a second time. Okay, and then also, I mean, if you're, and he was this, he, he was probably, he might've been painting a lot of these straight out of the tube, but most of the time, if you're gonna paint, you're not gonna be, if you're gonna get into it, you're not gonna be painting straight, the, the straight color, straight out of the tube, just, you know, most paint comes in tubes. But uh, you're generally not gonna be doing that you're generally going to be making some kind of mixture because you want to tone stuff down to make it look more like normal. Okay, so the back of this is going to be green and then that's going to be blue and then all the leaves are green. So we're going to go ahead and paint this section green and get more. One nice thing about not mixing is we can just go and always test your watercolors good enough. Make sure you've got the right color before you do it because you can't always take it back. Ooh, that's not dry. Mistakes. I'm gonna keep my distance from this. Okay. Should have waited and painted the other stuff first, but that's okay. Matisse, when he was doing this kind of stuff, a lot of it, he did it really fast, too. And so if you look, like, they're not... He was too good to worry about absolute perfectionism. That's one thing, is people get... After they've painted for a while, most people get more free, or they call it looser, with their paintings. And I haven't really been able to do that yet. Maybe I should paint more. But my, paint, my paintings are tight. Um, they tend to be because I'm a terrible perfectionist and I try to get over it, but this is this is not the place for perfectionism. This is the place for done and happy to have accomplished something and making art. Because art, I know I keep, I keep harping on it, art is good for everybody and especially like right now is super duper scary time and things are really weird. So, you know, keep saying somehow and art's a great way to do it. By the way, if you decide you wanna buy a set of watercolors or something, you don't have them at home, don't go out. Order them if you can. If not, uh, I got a, um, a notification today that, that Michael's is now doing curbside pickup, which I'm not going to Michael's. Um, and if I really need anything, I'll order it from an art store, but, um, or even Amazon. They're, they're reasonably fast with their shipping still. Amazon is. And Arteza, I said it, I said it before, Arteza is a great reasonably priced brand. 
um, if you are beginning but you want something decent. Once you start like selling stuff or something like that, you have to worry about light fastness, which is what if these people hang it in a window? Will it fade to white in three months? And that's when you, you're like, oh, I better get the good stuff. And that's where it gets really expensive. Okay, so I'm gonna paint my lily pads. Oh, hey, hey, Stephanie, I'm glad to see y'all. This is fun. Yeah, yeah, Deliberately Creative is fantastic. I linked to her channel in my description, by the way, and um, she has been really hyping the Arteza, and generally, I think Arteza is fantastic, but if you want to do watercolor or just super duper fun, relaxing painting, she does paint pouring, all kind of stuff, gouache lately, which I'm a huge fan of, um, check out her channel. So, yeah, uh, my, my, my live stream is nothing like yours. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be doing it long enough. We'll see how long the libraries are closed to, to um, get to a semi-professional level. This is just like, hey, look, I'm online and painting and learn stuff about Matisse. By the way, if you missed the educational portion, it's at the beginning. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of editing to the actual video because um, I forgot to find a color version of this before I started drawing and it took me a long time digging in photos to find a photo of the one I painted of this simplified one. So, um, but anyway, yeah, totally, totally check out Deliberately Creative. She's fantastic and she will keep you occupied because the, I think one of the big things right now is keeping you occupied and in your house. Stay in your house if you can. <laughs> I know a lot of us aren't working right now. Um, I doubt, Catherine, I don't know if you are savvy. I know you're not. Um, so we just need to, we need to stick together. And if you have the means to stream something, be it here or Instagram or something like that, entertain others. Keep, keep in contact with people. Just keep, you know, something going on. So people aren't just going crazy in their houses. So I'm done with the green. Um, Wow, this is really washed out. I'll take a picture afterward. But this is, oh no, I'm not done with the green. Um, thank you for saying I'm doing great. I appreciate that. I'm doing my best. This is really my first one besides like me sitting there making a pot holder and talking to pe two people I know pretty well yesterday. So anyway, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna get a little bit darker green because I painted on the pink and it's put in there. Yeah, this is, this is, a really really ancient palette that I put together like right after I started watercoloring in the first place this is me just testing um, it's good but uh, it's it's really really old and I made some super questionable choices but that's okay so I'm just gonna go in and fill in these little circles and this is not the right brush for that. I'm going to use a smaller brush because I'm not getting enough spring from the big one. Wow, five paintings. See, that's awesome. I don't, I don't have the creativity to do that, I don't think, five days a week. And I also don't really have the voice. Although, I mean, I streamed for an hour and a half yesterday and I'm trucking on today thank you for su subscribing savvy um so we'll see um how many of these kind of things i can do i don't i think from now on it's going to be more like call it quarantine art time or something and just do something simpler it's just this is this is what i've been doing at work this month and now that I'm not working, and this is, uh, again, not uh, affiliated with the library. <laughs> not breaking social media rules, so when I get back, I get in trouble. 
Um, so we'll see. And this is this is ooh heavily modified. If you go out of the lines on these, do not worry about it. Anyway, so there we go. Just painting in these. Now remember, you saw that that painting that Matisse did. Ah. Okay, good thing most of that's going to be black. Um, you saw the painting that Matisse did, um, and his was pretty not perfect, and we're not really going for perfection. We're just going for fun. And this is definitely fun, and I think that if you have kids, your kids might like doing it. Hopefully this is simple enough. And don't forget, uh, I'm mentioning it again, don't forget the traceables in the bottom. And if you follow me on Twitter, which is the best place to get in touch with me anyway, um, at 08 I forgot, it's on the bottom of the screen, um, you can see a fun animation of me drawing it this morning from Procreate. Okay, there we go. So there are dots. We're not going to touch that again. Yeah, they turned out kind of cute. So it's it's cute that's that's what we'll go with is cute um next up the last little thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go i'm gonna get oh i'm gonna get this pink let's go and this is gonna be mostly water let me test it again always test your watercolors to make sure you're not getting some kind of wild color i'm just gonna deal with that in there and I'm going to make little, okay, that's not enough. Again, watercolor dries lighter. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do little flowers like that. Cats. Ollie is still in the bedroom. He probably won't get into trouble. Yeah. There we go. There are our little flowers. Next up, we have some of the bigger bits. Actually, we can go ahead. This and the table are the same color. This is a bluey color, and this is just going to be black with the rest of it, though. I think I'm going to change that right now because that's going to be a problem. Actually, we will do that black, but we'll, we'll just demonstrate how... Um, you use more water and watercolor and it's a lighter color. So again, this is probably, this is better suited for acrylic, but I don't have acrylic at home. So we'll, we're, we're, we're making do. That's one thing artists and librarians are good at making do. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to use a small one and I'm just going to use, I don't know. There's just, okay. So we have the phthalo blue. And this is just use whatever blue you have. This is just the most vibrant blue I have on my palette. The other one isn't quite. And I think this is a different brand than the other one. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use tons of water. I'm just like scooping up water. Let's see what this looks like. I'm probably, I'm going to add a little green because that's really a teal. Eh, I'm just going to dump some green in there. Like what I'm doing today is not, ah, perfect. Well, we're going to put a little more green, a little more water. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to do the small bits first. I'm going to go over here and, well, no, I'm not. I'm going to do the big bits first. I'm going to do the big table first because I can kind of avoid that pretty easy going down and doing that. So let's do the table. I'm using my medium brush. This is actually specifically, this is a number eight watercolor brush, but that doesn't mean it, anything really because brush companies don't use the same size. Anyway, so I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paint. Ooh, more water. That's a lovely color. I go over here and just really, I'm, I'm, I'm working the loose right now. And just paint this in. Kind of careful around this. This yellow should be dry. 
If not, you'll just, ah, you'll just have a really pretty green pot, which is, looks like I'm going to get, oh, not too bad. Let's go around out here. See, normally when I do programs, I try not to participate in them and paint them. I just bring like an example because I'm such a perfectionist that I really want to take longer and then I'm never happy with my result, even though like the people who do it do such a good job. Um, that's going to be blue too though. Let's see. So my perfectionism just like comes out really bad when I'm painting, but we're, we're trying today. We're doing pretty well. Yee, what is that? That's like a hair. Gross. One nice thing about ah, smearing all of your paint. One nice thing about um, working away from home and, you know, being able to paint for stuff like this away from home is that there are no animals there and thus there isn't hair everywhere. Okay, almost done with the table. Now if you're getting to where you know you haven't used enough paint, I mean you haven't made enough paint or mixed it, then um, kind of just hope you can get through like one big shape because then it won't matter as much. Let's see, where's the, I get more thalo blue. Ooh, that's, that's some thalo-y thalo blue. Dump some green into it. Oh, we'll need more green. Green. Let's see what this looks like. Let's see if it's similar. Ooh, put a lot of, yeah, too green. A little bit of blue, a lot of water. The brushes I'm using are um, really good watercolor brushes, and they use a ton of water. Actually, that would have been a better color, but that's okay. I mean, they will, they'll hold a ton of water. That's good enough for government work. Okay, so now I'm going to go back with my, hmm. I'm going to go with my m medium, well, that was make a brush. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to keep to this one. I'm going to paint this. I'm going to scoot around. Normally just turn your, what you're painting. Just turn your painting. That's all. But I don't want to do that because you're trying to paint along. I'm going to go down here. I really like the effect that this one, this uh, 6B pencil has had. Okay, so I do this one so we know which one is which size which. It doesn't really matter. There's one. It's so tied up in the details. Yeah. Yeah, your, your frog yesterday, though, that was so good. You didn't get t tied up in the details. You got that done pretty fast and that was that was amazing like that that was so good I was really really impressed with the frog I need to follow along with that one myself what I want to do is learn how to paint my dogs <laughs> I need to sit down and do it like not only is are they you know painting a life something alive but they're also black labs and painting you know paint painting something with black fur it's, uh seems extra hard and scary to me. Okay, so there's that. Um, I'm gonna, hmm, I'm gonna start this with the medium brush and then go down to the smaller one when I get by the fish. There's no harm with changing brushes midsection. Just try not, oh look, it's a slightly different color. Yeah, see, that's why I was gonna do that. Let's let's go ahead and switch. Try to do this fast, and it becomes crazy. Okay. One nice thing about watercolor, though, is like once it dries, you can pretty much get any hair off of it. You can't do that with like oil paints; way harder. 
and acrylic, it kind of just dries in it and becomes plasticized. That's one nice thing about watercolor, really gouache too. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do about this bottom part. I paint down here. See, here's one nice thing about how ending up with a different color. Get stand out. Okay, I'm going to paint around here. And then I'm going to paint around the rest of the fish. I'm not going to worry terribly about hitting this yellow. Um, but I'm going to try and go around some of them at least quickly. This is one of those situations where it's better to like use gouache or an opaque paint medium so you can go back over with lighter colors but that doesn't work in watercolor. So we're just going to do our best down here. Don't worry if you end up and if you get if you even start getting frustrated just paint the thing and let there be some green in it. Like there is so nothing wrong with having a little green up in there. There's some green up in the original too. If you hear scrabbling and scratching, it's the cats playing through the door. Maurice is still in here. And Ollie dislikes being contained, but he wouldn't have stopped. Besides, he has that whole side of the house. He's good. Oh, I'm mad at myself for that. Be careful when you do these things. That's okay, though. And one thing that uh, Stephanie said yesterday and says pretty often is if you don't like it at the end, just do it again. Like, it's fine. This is just paper. Paper and paint. That's all. So paint this. I'm okay with this being this a different color. Kinda. Let me put some of this in here and get some more water. And that makes a little bit of difference. I'm making myself okay with this being different. That's it. Yeah, see, that looks okay. This is definitely greener than my table. In real life, if I was paying this for myself, I would have, A, been more careful to mix right and, B, um, repainted that table. But we're not going to do that today. You can't really tell the difference with this washed out light anyway. I really need to work on white balance on this stuff. I just have auto white balance on. It's not doing that great of a job. Okay. So, hmm. All we have left is black. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this section first that I advertised as being gray. And that's, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some black. If you don't, uh, if I don't want to get into mixing black, you can totally mix your own black. If you don't have a black, um, if you have a more sophisticated palette than this, um, what you do is my favorite black, and there are a lot of ways to do it. My favorite is um, ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna. But there are a lot of, oh, of ways to make black. Let's see, is this gray? Oh, that is gray. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go up here, I'm gonna paint this gray. And around it is gonna be black. And that is going to distinguish it from the rest. And that way my lines are still enough. I'm just using the corner of this big brush and trying not to get into the yellow. Whether or not your paint will pick up depends on a few things, including what kind of paper you're using and what kind of paint you're using and how long it's sat there. So I'm using good paper because I've found, I know I said at the beginning, I think with watercolor, the most important thing is the paper. I'm using good good paper and good brushes and not good and acceptable paint 
So while that dries, because I don't want that all bleeding together, because it will, um, I'm going to paint these little bits black, and then I'm going to take a two-minute body break. So I want black, so I'm just going to go straight from here and get, like, black, black, because I want this to be black. And this to be black. I put a little black there. And then the rest is going to be big black. And I will be back in two seconds. I'll put on some legal music while I do. I really like this song. Okay. Coming on should be. Yeah, here we go. I will be back in like seriously two seconds. Burb. Oh, oh. Here we go. One second. Okay, I'm back, and we're gonna go, oh yeah, you know, I meant to have music playing through the whole time. Yeah, I'm real bad about that. Okay, we'll just, we'll just leave that going. Okay, I'm really bad about that. So all we have left is this big swath of black. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get black and just make a bunch of it. It doesn't need to be like pure, 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 pure black. And if you look at Matisse's original, he was pretty messy with that black. Um, and there's a lot of gray areas in there too. Again, good enough. I'm gonna go in and paint the big areas. I'll, we'll see when I go back and do the other ones with. That's gonna save me a lot down here, except for that area, and I'm not gonna be a perfectionist. And uh, go back and fix that. We're just not gonna care today. So this this pink should definitely be dry. So I'm not even gonna worry about it. All I want this black to be is darker than this gray, which is not dry yet. That's okay. do that. It's making a neat gradient though, isn't it? I need to figure out this light right here because I know that it is not helping the picture of me. It's just I don't know how to get me going good and or going well and the painting down here really, really visible. See, and here's my chance also to fix these parts where I went over on this chair. If you're not comfortable using this big of a brush right here, go ahead and don't. Just going for it. I, I say it at my programs all the time, and again, not representing the library, 
my opinions are my own, but um, this is all practice. You get good at art from practice. Nobody woke up as much as Picasso would like to think he did, who just just amazing at art. Um, that's not how it works. It is practice, 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 and that's how. If you want to get good at this stuff, you you just have to sit and put the hours in. They say that um, it takes. 10,000 hours of doing something to master it. 10,000 hours is a lot of time. I, I don't think I've put 10,000 hours in anything. And that's with two master's degrees. Certainly didn't in library school. Yeah, I'm just using the corner to get this little, these little areas. And since that's dry, it's not causing me a huge problem. How these how these graphite lines or pencil lines are, are working. I'm not gonna worry about that hair right now. It can yeah, I am. Off. There we go. Be careful around this, because this is ideally white and not smudged with pink, but what ifs? Oh, we are so, so much, so almost done. Oh, I put too much, too much white in there. Let's see if we can get a similar blood. It doesn't, I mean, if you look at the original right now, it's getting grayer on the side. So it doesn't matter that much. I'm going to try and get something similar though. Let's see. Mm. 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 Good enough. Let's see, find out now. Yeah, good enough. Since my lines are still wet, I don't have to worry about it too much because it'll kind of create its own gradient for this side a little bit. Yeah, and getting my hand in paint. actually that'll give me more paint anyway there are definitely areas in Matisse's painting that are more black than others and after I do this I really need to remember not to put my hand in it okay I'm gonna run that. I'm just gonna make it look like the flower part is smaller. Another thing with watercolor, if you do something you don't like, you pretty much need to let it dry before you start messing with it like I just did, or else you end up with things that you don't particularly like. Dry up some of this, it's too much paint. All I'm doing is wiping it on my rag. Lines through. Getting there. Go ahead. Might be full of regret after this. We'll find out, won't we? 
Yeah, that's still one dry. Seriously. And now what I'm gonna have to do is blend the two in. I won't end up with a stupid line. All I'm doing is I'm getting increasingly clean brushes and more water. <laughs> and going down and blending this in. Like that, good enough. Okay. Here, we're gonna finish this. Ah, what happened? Oh, that was a drop of water, wasn't it? Oh, was it nice? Shouldn't go through. There we go. I've got paint everywhere today. See, is this the? I think this might be my first live stream that I've actually. I think I tried it one time, but I was having an equipment problem because I was trying to set it up with my desktop and so it just, because I didn't think my laptop could push it, but it can. My desktop's a few feet away and that wasn't working out. Unlike me, if you need your painting to be at a different angle, angle it. Oh, look at that! This is not doing what I want this for here. Wash with water on it. Ooh, I need to leave that alone. Leave it. Like I say to my dogs. Okay, now all that's left. <sighs> Is, is this 100% dry? Yes. I'm going to go back right now, pick up some of this, put some, a little bit more water in it, some of this orange, and fix this fish. Ooh, that was easy. See, when you're going darker, a lot of the times you can fix stuff. It's just when you're going lighter, you can't. Okay, I'm going to get more black. This must be... Uh, jet black because it's tending to blue but not in a way that paints gray with. Anyway, eh, a little bit more. Good. Now I'm just gonna go, I am gonna turn it to do this because I draw better horizontal lines than I do vertical. I'm gonna go in here and that. In this black space, fix where I went way over. Not worry about it too much. Blind eyes in the darkness, frail hands reaching out, sword echoes in the smoke as the doors behind me close. Okay. Oh, we're so close. Each turn tangled in the fear of losing sight of the slowly fading light. Like that. tip for drawing straight lines is to use your whole arm and not just your wrist to draw. In general, you should be using your whole arm and not your wrist to draw and you'll get a better result. Okay. Once 
this. Dry down here. Never forget to sign your paintings. Just because you did it, you should be proud of it. Always sign your paintings. Here's my little brush. Mm. Color. Oh, there's some purple in there anyways. I'm just gonna use oh that's that's gonna be too light of purple. I'm gonna use I'll just use black there we go and you now if you want to frame it you're gonna to want to do it up in there a little bit so that it's not covered up by the frame but I'm probably not gonna do this one so I do L H A and there it is done once it is dry I'll take a picture and that is but a lot of people subscribe like don't keep going after you sign your name but yeah I just did okay so there you go there is your simplified Matisse I hope you had a good time I hope you learned some things about Matisse if you missed the educational portion please go back like once this video is up permanently um, please go back and learn a little bit about Matisse. He was an interesting guy. Oh no, look at that. Um, and uh, he's worth learning some about. I don't like that either. There we go. So, thank you for joining me at this really interesting, very unofficial quarantine art club um i will be back streaming at some point and uh, now that i have a little bit of experience hopefully I, it will be it will go more smoothly and i'll be better prepared for it but thank you so so much for joining me this has been a great time um i've definitely enjoyed myself and hey here's this lovely painting this is actually the first the first painting i've done since oh wait wait we forgot this is the first painting I've done since uh, I've been stuck in my house. I had good intentions, but that's but I haven't followed through. So here's what we're gonna do. This is one of the perks of taping stuff down. You tape stuff down for a couple reasons. You don't want it to um, buckle, and that goes for especially less expensive watercolor paper. With any watercolor paper, if it's not on a block, which means it's connected at all four sides, you want to um, tape it down. And then when you this is this is artist tape, but masking tape works. You just be be very careful, no matter what kind of tape you're using, um, and don't stick your fingers in wet paint. I mean, ideally, really wait until your painting is dry to take this off. Oh, what happened here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there we go. See, I got a couple little splotches, but I'm gonna call that character. Because, you know. I think this turned out cute. Thanks for joining me, Catherine. Are you I hope you're gonna like paint this or color it or something. If nothing else, you can download the presentation and look at the pretty pictures. There's something to be said for that. Coloring is good for everybody, you don't have to paint it. Okay. Very carefully, look at these lovely clean edges. Which I just smudged, but that's okay. If I was being perfect, I would go back and fix that with gouache, but I'm not going to. Here's what I was painting on. This, this just masonite. It comes in two foot by four foot sheets. It's great to paint on. Way cheaper than canvas. Anyway, you have to gesso it twice. So yeah, so there we go. Look at the clean edges. That makes it look so much better, doesn't it? Just automatically. Anyway, yeah, yeah, Catherine, you're kind of in the same boat. That's why it's swatching, like even just a really quick swatching job 
helps so much. Um, that's why I was like, what colors are on here? I almost used another one that had like 36 colors by Core, which is a great, um, a great new brand um, owned by Golden, the, the people who make the good acrylic paint. Uh, and I almost used that. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to even mess with that. So, and here really the only thing I had to mix was that orange. And I figured this would be more similar to stuff people might have at home with just 12 colors. Yeah, that's 12. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, share it with me when you're done. I want to see it. I'm sure it's going to be lovely on any platform, Facebook or whatever you want. I'm, oh, wait, I forgot everywhere um but facebook so and you know my name so anyway thank you so much for joining me uh and uh yeah there will be further events listed um on various platforms before another live stream goes up that's like this i might just do some casual live streaming on twitch because it's fun uh, and I, now I have this set up, but uh, anything that's going to be an actual, actually instructional, instructional will involve announcements ahead of time. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see the one that you did. That's going to be so cool. So anyway, I will see you next time this happens. And if you have any ideas or any suggestions, like if you want to do an artist that you know, we can simplify. If you want to do an artist, um, let me know. If, if you think, hey, do this and it'll be better, be more organized, let me know. You can do that in the comments here even if you want to, however you want. But anyway, thank you so much, um, and I will see y'all next time. to it.